Okay, today we're going to talk about equations, tables, and graphs. So make sure you put that at the top of your page and put today's date in the top right corner. If you remember from the functions lesson, uh, when we talk about equations, tables, and graphs, we're talking about things like y equals uh, 15x, and we're going to graph those, this being the function uh, and getting the graph. So first, though, we're going to apply it to real life, like real life functions. So you don't have to write this whole thing down, uh, but just pay attention. Make a table and sketch a graph of the path of a submarine diving at 50 feet per minute. The depth of the submarine is represented by the equation d equals negative 50m. Make sure you write that down. Where d is the depth and m is the number of minutes. Every time I have a word problem, I reread it. Make a table and sketch a graph of the path of a submarine diving at 50 feet per minute. The depth of the submarine is represented by the equation d equals negative 50m where d is the depth and m is the number of minutes. Now it's negative 50m because it's diving, right? If you can picture uh, a submarine, um, it's going to be like this with a little thing on it and uh, let's say propellers. Uh, and it's going to be diving at 50 feet per minute, right? And you would think I'd want this with it. Um, so d equals negative 50m. That is our function. So make sure you write down our function. Now, it doesn't tell us number of minutes, right? Well, whenever I don't have that, I like to think of easy numbers. So think about 0, 1, 2, and 3 minutes. And 4. Why not? So we're going to make our table. We're going to have inputs and outputs because it's a function. So we're going to have m as our input because if this was a typical function with x and y, this would be our x. This would be our input. And whatever our answer is, whatever our isolated variable is, that's our output. So m is our input, d is our output. And then here we have the function, d equals negative 50m. Now again, I'm going to use really easy numbers for my minutes. I'm going to use uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And now I'm going to plug in. D equals negative 50 times 0. Well, anything times 0, 0, right? So that'd be 0. Uh, D equals negative 50 times 1. Negative 50 times 1 is negative 50. D equals negative 50 times 2, which is negative 100. D equals negative 50 times 3, which is negative 150. So I have my ordered pairs, right? So I can make my extra column over here, uh, M comma D, which is kind of like X comma Y, right? So 0, 0. Uh, 1, negative 50, 2, and negative 100, and then 3 and negative 150. So I can graph those now. And what's weird, look at this graph. They're huge numbers. I'm not going to fit it on the graph if I'm going to use a, a typical graph where every single line is 1. I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent x and y uh, X's, I'm going to leave as 1 because that goes up by 1. But Y's, I'm going to go by 50's. Why not? So let's uh, graph it. And when we graph it, we have to label our, well, this will be our D's, right? Because it's kind of like our Y's, and this will be our M's. Um, so my M's, I'm going to go by 1's. So I have to label that. So if you don't label it, it's assumed it's ones, but we have to label it, right? One, two, three, four, five. And then my Ds, I'm going to go by 50s. 50, 100, those are negatives, right? So that'd be negative 50, negative 100, 
negative 150, negative 200, and negative 250 just for good measure. And then it'd be the same up here, but since we don't have those numbers, we don't have to worry about that. So let's plot them. 0, 0, 1, negative 50, 2, negative 100, and 3, negative 150. So there's our nice function. And notice, if we, would, if we were to do the vertical line test, if we were to do the vertical line test, it would uh, be perfect for us, and it would never cross uh, two spots at once. So that's a function. So that's our function of the submarine diving uh, at 50 feet per minute. And that is exactly the, the equation of our function. Try number two on your own. Okay, welcome back. So our function is h equals 12s. So we need to make the table where, sorry, s is our inputs, right? And here's our function, h equals 12s. And then h is our output because it's the isolated variable. Uh, let's use 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then we'll do s comma h. And remember, this is kind of like uh, y equals 12x, right? All right, let's fill them in. Well, 12 times 0 is 0, right? So it'd be 0 comma 0. Uh, 12 times 1 is 12, so 1 comma 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times, uh, so it'd be 2, 24. And then 12 times 3 is 36, so that'd be 3, 36. Again, just like last time, uh, I'm, I can't have the graph, I can't have every line be 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make it so that each line, each of my y's, let's say, and you might not have done it this way, but I'm going to make each of my y's be uh, 10, because that'll just be easy for me. So my x is here, or my, you could call them s's. My x's and my y's. My x's, I'm going to go up by 1, like I always do. And my y's, I'll go up by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 for good measure. Okay, so I have 0, 0, 1, 12, it'd be about right there, 2, 24, 3, 36. Get a nice linear function here. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I use negative numbers? Why, why are my s's, why are my seconds not negative? Why are they zero and then positive from there? You can't have negative time. It can only be positive. So that's why we use uh, positive numbers. All right. Here it says, use a table to make a graph and to write an equation. If you remember from last year, I told you a really easy way to make an equation from a table. Uh, the really easy way is to figure out what it's going up by. That's going up by 6, right? So that means it's y equals 6x. Whatever it's going up or down by, that's what you multiply by x. Now, here's the tricky part. What do you add to it? You add to it whatever the zero term is. Here, the first term is 6, second term is 12, third term is 18, fourth term is 24. What's the zero term? Well, the zero term is 0. So it's like 6x plus 0. So that'd be y equals 6x. Because you don't need to really have that zero, right? So now let's graph it. Um, we pretty much just need to graph these points, right? And I know my graphs aren't perfect, but they don't need to be. So my x's, again, I'll go up by 1's. My y's, though, I'm going to have them go up by maybe 5's. And you might have just gone up by sixes, that's fine. But fives are a nice, easy number to use. And notice, I'm not doing a perfect thing, but that's going to work. So, zero, 
When x is 0, y is 0. That's good. When x is 1, y is 6. When x is 2, y is 12. When x is 3, y is 18. When x is 4, y is 24. So we have our graph and we have our equation. Um, so remember, whatever it's going up or down by, that's what you multiply by x. And then you add the zero term. So try that on number four. Okay, welcome back. So whatever it's going up or down by, that's what you multiply by x. It looks like the pattern, and I'm talking about the outputs, the pattern is by one, right? So that'd be y equals 1x. Now, what do we add to it? Well, find the zero term. First term, second term, third term, fourth term. The zero term is negative 1. So it'd be 1x plus negative 1. Or you could do 1x. We don't really need that 1, right? You could do x minus 1. Those are the same thing, right? Because plus negative is the same as minus, and then 1x is the same as x. So now let's graph it. Notice I'm not going to label them uh, with numbers so that I know that each one is 1, right? And I'm labeling the x and y axis just so I know. Uh, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3. So that gives me a nice linear function. Okay, now we have a graph. We need to make a table out of it and write an equation. Uh, so we need to plot our x's and y's. So take a look at this graph. Notice there's no labeling, so it's going up by 1's. So when x is negative 2, y is negative 1. When x is 0, or sorry, when x is negative 1, y is 0. When x is 0, y is 1. Notice a nice pattern here. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 3. And when x is 3, y is 4. So notice what it's going up by. It's going up by 1, right? So that's y equals 1x, or just x. And then what is it when our 0 term is? Our 0 term is actually when x equals 0, that's the y-intercept. It's called the y-intercept because where does it hit the y-axis? Uh, it hits the y-axis at 1, so it's going to be 1x plus 1, or just y equals x plus 1. Whatever it's going up by, that's what you multiply by x. And then the zero term you add on. Try number 6 on your own. All right, welcome back. If you notice... This is going by 1s, but this is going by 2s. That's why it's labeled. Okay, So here's our x's and y's. Uh, when x is 0, y is 2. When x is 1, y is 4. When x is 2, y is 6. When x is 3, y is 8. And just for good measure, when x is 4, y is 10. Now it's going up by 2 every time, right? So that means it's y equals 2x. Now, let's look at the zero term. Uh, the zero term, meaning this is first term, second term, third term, fourth term, because the inputs are the terms, or the, the domain. Uh, at the zero term, y is 2. So it's going to be 2x plus 2. There's our equation. Whatever the pattern is times x, and whatever the zero term is, you add that on. All right, great job.